listening the uh, the last workshop in the series offered by Fairfax Democrats, um, change um, can be difficult, right? Uh, think about change. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, change can be difficult. Think about changing things that uh, you've been doing for a long time, like uh, at work or you know, in, at, at home, um, things that affect your job performance, your, your relationship, your marriage, your, your parenting, right? They take a lot of work, right? Um, and so, but changing democratic communication um, and moral branding, which is the lesser known thing um, we need to focus on, can be especially difficult, you know? Um, we have so many Democrats who for years uh, thought of communication and messaging uh, as kind of an afterthought. You know, and so uh, secondary, a secondary communication, a secondary to things like organizing, money, politics, media issues. So it 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 really what I'm talking about here requires what we're talking about requires a change of mindset. Um, you know, to complicate matters, you know, we have the fact that many Democrats sort of ignore, uh, neglect the crucial moral dimension of politics that you know, and uh, believe that it's all about informing, educating, and persuading uh, voters. Um, add to that the many Democrats who just frankly, in my, I would argue, don't quite understand how branding works. Um, don't understand probably why corporations spend millions and millions on branding. Um, so I, you know, you have to add to that, you know, that many, many Democrats believe that we as Democrats are incapable of changing, improving the way we communicate, you know? There are people out there who think that we cannot improve. We can never have any sort of message discipline of any kind. Um, you know, so when you think of all these things, you know, the job can seem daunting, right? Um, so anyway, but uh, uh, so that's what we're here, right? And so um, so anyway, this is a uh, good article. I showed this uh, last time. Um, so this is uh, this is. Um, a, a, I want to show a, basically this picture with with uh, John Kerry and, and George W. Bush, um, and uh, you know I um, this is when I first learned that in terms of communication, we Democrats can win the battle and lose the war, right? As uh, uh, George W. Bush uh, won re-election two thousand four uh, after you know the disastrous invasion and occupation of Iraq based on deception. And uh, so he said in 2005, okay, um, and uh, just the uh, past few days, I found this quote, it was really interesting. In, in 2005, in my line of work, he said, you got to keep repeating things over and over and over again for the, quote, truth to sink in, okay? So um, I, 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 think we, I think we need to learn from that. Um, so now I wanted to show, uh, I wanted to show a video let me see if I can do this, that I put together. Um, let's just see. I don't know if you can actually. We know change is difficult, but we Democrats must improve the way we communicate. Hold Fair on facts a we, we know change is difficult, but we Democrats must improve the way we communicate. Fairfax Democrats are showing true leadership by at least starting a conversation about communication and branding. Okay, can you can everyone hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yep. Uh, yeah. So I mean, yes. as you as 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 you as you can suspect, uh, she she doesn't exist, right? She's not real, right? It's uh, <laughs> artificial intelligence, right? But uh, anyway, um, but yeah, I am very grateful to Fairfax Democrats for hosting these very valuable uh, workshops. Okay, so. Uh, Moving so this is review from from the past uh, workshops, but it's important, you know. So we talked about this. We're not going to spend a lot of time uh, from the field of linguistics. We know all politics is moral. Um, even local and pocketbook issues have moral underpinnings. Uh, from psychology, we know that people vote on feelings, not facts, no reason, or logic. And from neuroscience, we know our top communication goal is really to connect with people and activate certain mental frames to push the right moral buttons, okay? Um, instead of just focusing on, you know, uh, chiefly informing, educating, persuading, okay? Um, so we achieve this through proper framing. 
Um, now, what are mental frames? Uh, this, this, I showed this last time. You know, mental frames, networks, they're networks of association that are actually embodied in the brain. They're physical, okay? Um, uh, they're neural circuits, and, uh, and they determine the way we perceive the world, okay? Uh, we were talking with uh, Greg before we started um, that, for instance, you know, um, we, we, we use mental frames to understand all kinds of things in life, right? Like, for instance, uh, uh, I talked about, uh, say, if I mention, um, you know, for those people who have a Christian background, okay, if I mention the morning of December 25th, you know, so some people will associate a number of things, you know, like waking up and going to the Christmas tree, if you have one, and looking at the gifts, and, you know, so it's different things. Greg, you had, you had an example that you thought of, right? Well, sometimes when I'm making spaghetti, I uh, think of uh, making spaghetti with friends when, back when I was uh, in, the, in the Navy. And, and um, you know, and a lot of frames are associated, our strongest frames are associated with family and <laughs> food. And exactly. So that's how I think we can uh, appreciate it. And, and um, you, you know, it takes, I think, Political framing can only aspire to this, that sort of strength of, of the frames that we have, of the neural circuits we developed when we were children and growing up. Yeah, yeah, we do that throughout our life. We develop mental frames to that help us understand the world, right, and conceptualize things. And um, and so we need to pay more attention to that. So so I want I wanted to show you. What mental frame, what political mental frames look like? You know, basically, uh, um, this, you know, they they tend to be tied to moral values, um, but they don't have to be. Uh, but here is basically a list. You know, just things. Uh, say, for instance, a democratic frame um, is protection and empowerment. Um, you know, uh, you know, leveling the playing field. Um, you know, growing the pie. We, we Democrats believe in economic abundance, you know, um, um, and the other side, you know, and a lot of our, a lot of our mental frames are tied one way or another to social responsibility. Um, the other side is more about extreme personal responsibility. So social responsibility on one side, personal responsibility on the other. Um, and, you know, as far as emphasis, right? Uh, there's a GOP frame, for instance, economic scarcity, okay? Essentially, you're on your own, right? Uh, we, you know, they want to cut all programs, safety net, et cetera. Um, and so that's kind of that type of thinking, right? Um, you know, with the, another frame is love of, love of country, okay? Protection of country, okay? Say, for instance, when that, in that quote I have in there, uh, I believe our country will be stronger if we... Um, do uh, if we adopt these ideas, okay? Um, I'll say, for instance, in terms of economic scarcity, here's a quote um, to try to revoke it, uh, activate it, okay? Uh, they're going to raise my taxes to pay for that. Um, then, for instance, the first one, protection empowerment, um, you, you know, here's a quote, I believe that everyone benefits when we don't leave people behind, you know? It's the right thing to do. So, um, we're we go moving down the down the, the, the list here. Um, you know, for a GOP frame, they've been using this one since the 80s. All government is bad, and all government is a threat to freedom. Um, here's one that is rarely evoked that I'm hoping that we do more of this, right? We evoke basically a frame as government is a force for good. Um, you know, we were just talking with Greg before we started. Um, you know, just think of how many more Americans uh, would have lost, how many more families would have been affected by COVID, you know, more, we lost about a million Americans, you know, if it wasn't for the Biden administration putting out the uh, vaccines uh, out there, you know, we could go to the local pharmacy and get vaccinated for free. So um, another um, democratic frame that is rarely used, uh, evoked, or activated, public investment for public, public, private success, you know. Like you get this, um, uh, this business people, you know, talking about how, yeah, I made it on my own. No one helped me, right? Uh, pulled yourself by the bootstraps, okay? It's all baloney, right? I mean, if it wasn't for public education, you wouldn't have made it. If it wasn't for, 
you know, for 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 roads and highways and bridges and you know and, and military, um, you know, safety, police. Uh, so there's so many so many things. Um, and then there's another. These are other democratic frames, uh, stronger together. Okay, uh, Hillary used to talk about that. Okay, we're all in this together. Okay, uh, when some of us in our community are not well, um, it really affects all of us, one way, one way or another. Okay, uh, liberty and justice for all. Okay, equal justice under the law. Okay, and and for us Democrats, this one is very important, and that's why I think for some of us it bothers us so much to see the former president free. Uh, you know, and 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 still. Um, you know, I mean, it's, it's hard to understand, you know, how someone who's done so much harm, right? But um, anyway, there's the uh, definition of, of, of values, okay? Uh, values are beliefs, ideals, customs, caring and emotional investment um, related to morality, right and wrong, good and evil, okay? Ethical and ethical, okay? So, um, so anyway, just uh, moving on. Okay, so I wanted to talk about Joe, Joe, uh, President Joe Biden's uh, uh, State of the Union address, okay? Um, he did a, a fantastic job in um, on some respects, right? Um, but uh, I, I want to focus on the way he started his speech, okay? So this, this thing I have on the screen, I hope everyone can see it. Um, that's how he started his speech, okay? Very positive, very value-centered, okay? So, um, would someone like to read it just 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 for a change of pace? Folks, the story of America is the story of progress and resilience, of always moving forward, of never ever giving up. It's a story unique among all nations. We're the only country that has emerged from every crisis stronger than we got into it. And that's what we're doing again. Two years ago, the economy was reeling. Exactly. And then, and then, he, go, then he goes on, right? But, uh, but look, look, at, look at how he starts, okay? So, so I have, let's do a little practice session here, okay? So, so I would love for you guys to tell me which moral values is he evoking in, 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 with this, this part of the speech? Which mental frames, if you can think of any, is he evoking? Okay, and so, um, so, so one more. So I'm going to um, go into another screen that where I show you moral values. So I want to read it just one more time, um, just so it really sinks in. You know, folks, the story of America is the story of progress and resilience, of always moving forward, of never ever giving up. It's a story unique among all nations. We're the only country that has emerged from every crisis stronger than we got into it. Okay, so. So let's 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 think about uh, uh, about values, okay? Now this is the, this is a list of democratic. These are moral values that are associated with Democrats, okay? And so, which when you look at this, which moral values do you think that that appeals to or, or evokes? Empathy. Strength. Uh huh. Strength. Yep. What else? What else? Trust and honesty. Yes. Stronger together. Exactly. And he and he he uses the the word we. You know, we. Right. Cooperation. Exactly. It implies cooperation, doesn't it? Equality. Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah. So so. Yeah, so all this, all these things, right? Um, so, but basically, I mean, he's he's uh, painting a, and and it implies responsibility too, right? You know, um, uh, and and confronting issues and and with courage and and responsibility, right? Um, so anyway, um, so that's basically, um, yeah. So just I uh, just wanted to, uh, and it, it also implies unity, right? It implies unity. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's that's who we are as Democrats, right? I mean, we're the party of unity, of bringing people together, right? Um, I mean, in, in, and we're the party of empathy, and we're the party of freedom, you know, because we believe in freedom for all. Okay, so um, so anyway, 
we believe, you know, that we're all in it together, right? As we were saying, and, and we believe there is something, you know, known as a greater good, right? A common good. Um, and so, um, anyway, so uh, moving on. So here's some other, see if you can just tell me uh, what moral values are associated with these phrases, okay? So for instance, um, uh, the, the top one there, let me see what I'm doing here. Um, the top one there. I want to live in a society where people care about each other and I, and I need a government that works for all of us, not just the lucky few. <clears throat> Which uh, <clears throat> moral value do you think uh, it's appealing to there? Empathy. Uh huh. Yes. Unity. Exactly. Compassion. Yep. Exactly. Let's, let's, let's look at the next one. Let's look at the next one. We have a choice. People can fight for themselves or we can all work together. Common what good. Are, common good. Cooperation. Cooperation, exactly. Unity, right? Unity. Two, you know, exactly. Stronger together, right? Let's let's look at the last one, okay? A democrat is someone who cares what happens to other people, will face up to big problems, and bring us all together to solve them. What do you think about that one? Let's look at the list of moral values, okay? Mm -hmm. Stronger together. Stronger together, right? Inclusion. Well, Responsibility uh -huh. again. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. So, and and care, right? Care, care, empathy. See, a lot of a lot of our policies, a lot of our ideas, are tied to empathy. You know, it's it's who we are. You know, and um, and and but we care deeply about freedom, and we need to connect a little more to freedom. You know, and talk about it and convey that. Okay. Um, already. Well, so this I is just, also. If I yeah. may, Federico, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. go back. Um, you'll notice hey, there's that. Somebody who's uh, not unmuted. Yeah. Somebody who's unmuted, who's Hold background on. noise. All right. I'm working on that. Uh, but anyway, um, you'll notice that you don't have to, none of those messages are specific to any one of our many constituencies, constituencies within the Democratic Party. These speak to everyone, everyone mm -hmm. identify with that. Even Republicans, I think, can identify, some Republicans can identify with some of that. So that's the beauty of these sorts of messages. If we don't have an inclusion, then none of those things will happen. What was what was that? These are universal values, correct? Similar to yeah. what Biden started his speech with. No, if yeah, you that's right. If you don't have inclusion, you have nothing. If you don't include everyone, no matter who they are or what they are or who they love, you're not going to be able to accomplish any of these things. Empathy won't happen. Yeah, no, I agree. You know what? And um and that's one of the things that I talk about. Uh, there's something called the race class narrative. And so, so, so I think, you know, one of the things we're going to talk about, okay, that I've been talking about is message structure, right? It's a way of sort of replacing our current um, structure, which leads with anger and fear often, with the one where we lead with shared values, or we lead with inclusivity. Um, you know, we say things like, regardless of your race, your income, or where you're coming from, uh, we all want this. Or we all believe in this. So, so yeah, that's, that's important. That's important too. But essentially, what I advocate for is that we lead messages with bridges, that we, 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 we build, com we seek common ground the way we start, the way we lead, you know? And, uh, and so you can see in this, in this uh, uh, phrases here, that that's that's what it does, right? It's seeking common ground, um, shared values, right? It is the same way that Joe Biden started, right? Shared values, okay? And so, um, yeah, because frankly, we need to show the American people that the democratic values are mainstream core American values, period, you know? 
Uh, and so, and folks need to know that. And that's partly my life mission, you know? <laughs> so um, anyway, so then here is basically some, some uh, differences really between us and them. Um, you know, I really consider them a threat to freedom, the GOP, not, not Republicans, but MAGA Republicans and, uh, and, and the GOP, okay? Or, Geo or Republican politicians, okay? So a threat to freedom, recklessness, moral rot, fear, division, weakness, phony patriotism, negative, right? And compared to us, right? Who are we? Okay, we're moral clarity. We represent moral clarity. Okay, we protect the freedom for all. We were the party of responsibility, of hope, of unity, of strength, true love of country, you know? And we're the, par we're the party of positive. We're the party of yes. You know, that's like Joe Biden, you know, this, the man is a yes man, okay, in that he will get things done, you know, the way he worked, uh, he approached the vaccine issue, okay. So, um, now, um, we talked about this, but this on previous workshops, but so you get a Republican that tells you, gives you some conspiracy or some Fox watching person, you know, tells you the earth is flat, okay. So we need to understand, first of all, that our instinctive answer response is often wrong it's often uh counterproductive okay and so um so the answer is not the earth is not flat no look you got your facts all wrong the earth is not flat okay they're blah 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 then we're engaging we're we're yeah so we we stop we stop like it says right there we stop and we take a mental step back and we think what's the bottom line here what moral values are at stake, okay? So how does it relate, for instance, how does it relate to the pursuit of life, freedom, and inclusive prosperity for all Virginians, for all Americans, okay? How does it relate to unity? These things that we Democrats are, unity, community, strength, empathy, okay? How, how does the issue relate to government of, for, or of, by, and for the people, okay? Something, a lake of, George Lake of, um, Linguistic uh, um, uh, eminence, you know, I mean, uh, author said, talks about. So anyway, so um, yeah, but basically what we need to get into, um, we need to um, do more is to define the common, the bottom line, you know, you stop and you define the bottom line, you know, and so, so you can talk about integrity and uh, you can talk about how, um, you know, it's, you know, the reason that a lot of Democrats and Republicans can't communicate anymore, it's because of wild conspiracies like that, uh, with, with, you know, people who say things like that without any evidence or without, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's divisive. It, it divides us as Americans. Is that the kind of America you want? You want us all divided? Is that, it, you, who does that benefit? Because it doesn't benefit America, it weakens us. If we're divided and, and we have these wild conspiracies uh, circulating, it doesn't help us. Who does, who does it help? What side, are you, what side do you stand on? What country are you trying to help? You know? So anyway, um, any thoughts about this? Okay, I'm moving, moving on, okay? Where, so where, uh, where, does, where does fear come into the... The the uh, game here. Um, fear, 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 fear is fear is not a moral value, but moral value, but it's a it's a, a technique. Last November, Biden Biden used fear in regard to saving democracy, and that yeah. supposedly is one of the the factors that led to su success. So, so yeah. is it is it good to use fear, or is it or is it bad to use fear? Excellent, excellent question, Walt. Um, we, you know, so in the last workshop, we talked about uh, this, this thing really, why is it that leading with anger and fear works better for the other side than for us? Now, what Joe Biden did is something called loss aversion. So, he, and which is something that, that works. Yeah, uh, basically folks started seeing, even though we Democrats lack, in my opinion, a clear moral brand, which is, which is a huge weakness of ours and vulnerability. Um, Democrats, Democrats did a lot of that. They, they, they basically told people, 
let people know that you you're about to lose you're losing your freedoms you're losing your your democracy and and uh you know i mean and we had the dobbs decision you know the supreme court to prove it right so um but um but the problem with um but 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 biden is fairly positive i mean he's he stays fairly positive so so there's a way there's a way to bring up loss aversion and fear but but not but but not in the lead of our messages you know we we lead positive we lead with share values okay why you know why is freedom and democracy important to us americans you know define that define the bottom line and then talk about what the other side is doing you know um so someone raise the hand go ahead hi frederico isn't uh, the, the I don't know if you call it the value sandwich or, or what, but the idea that when you start with the values and positive, you got to tell them what is at risk. And then you come back with together we can, you know, to help them think it's solvable. So I think if you embed it in the middle and aren't being manipulative, you got to tell them the truth. And the truth was we're really at risk of losing our democracy. True. And it's true. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I mean, it, the important thing, I think, in general, is that we don't come out, we don't come across as angry, you know, that we don't come across as angry. Um, you know, they are the party, they're the party of anger, right? They're, they're the party of, you know, kids get out of my lawn, you know? I mean, they, we're, we're, we're the party of hope, of unity, um, of freedom, you know? And so, um, so you do mention it, you name the villain you name the villain and the violation of American values, you just don't lead with it, you know? Um, so, yeah, and, and we talk about freedom and we talk about moral values um, because when we do that, we're defining our own moral values in people's brains, you know? People need to, just like I have on the screen right there, something that Antonia Scatton uh, wrote. Antonia Scatton, uh, we talked about her amazing uh, framing expert, uh, and I encourage you to visit her Substack um, uh, a page. Uh, it's got, uh, so great, great framing. So anyway, she wrote, if we want voters to think of us Democrats as good people, you know, and our elected officials as good people, we can't just argue that our opponents are bad, right? I can think of a uh, uh, Terry McAuliffe campaign here for governor here in Virginia, um, you know, basically saying that, you know, the now current governor of Virginia uh, is tied to, linked to the former president, um, corrupt former president, right? So, but basically that's the, uh, um, yeah, so that's the, the uh, so, so, so moving on here, basically we need to, we need to talk about how our policies reflect our values and beliefs, okay? We need to help create a vision of a world that folks want to live in, you know? So, Here's another thing, you know, stories, storytelling. We, we, we need to, and this is, this is older than, you know, bread, okay? Um, stories work. Our brains are hardwired for stories, right? So, and as, as Antonia and Scatton says, we usually don't tell people stories um, that reveal our positive intentions, you know? By the way, stories make up narratives, and we need to be focused on that, on, on stories and narratives, okay? Um, and then, so when we, as this is what I just said, right? That when we frame with moral terms, when we lead with, uh, with shared values, we help reinforce, create, reinforce a democratic moral brand, which is crucial to American voters, okay? So um, now, why, why do I emphasize freedom so much, okay? So as I showed last time, freedom, you know, the studies basically show and, and surveys that show that Amer the Amer American voters care deeply about freedom, above everything else, pretty much, you know, e equity, you know, you name it, okay? Uh, I showed the statistics last time from Anat Schenker Osorio that she showed at Center for American Progress, okay? So now, why should we prioritize freedom and framing, okay? So this is uh, former uh, Obama Communications Director, Don Pfeiffer. I showed this last time. It's worth showing it again because I'm going to expand on it. Actually, we're gonna. Um, so 
I'm going to show you how we, how um, each of the categories um, work basically. But uh, but all democratic the way he puts it, okay, uh, Dan Pfeiffer, all democratic policies uh, policy positions at their core promote freedom, either freedom to do something or freedom from something. Okay, so he divides it into three categories. Can anyone tell me what the three categories are? Three categories of freedom. One's economic. Economic freedom is one. Religious? No. It, no? Uh, no. So economic, and then there are two more. Um, and I've learned actually there's a fourth one. Uh, I, um, but, uh, and I'll tell you about it in a moment. Yeah. So economic freedom. Like what kinds of things do you think are included there? Uh, what gives you what gives uh, an average American economic freedom? You know, what kind of policy, for instance? Job creation. Job creation. Living getting in health care. Yep. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, um, think about um, raising the minimum wage, right? So, okay. What was that? Social security. Yep. That's probably one of the best names for uh, uh, a safety net program ever, you know, very well thought out. Um, so anyway, so personal freedom, okay, is there, right? Freedom to control your body without interference. And that includes constitutionally protected safe and legal abortion, um, freedom to marry the person you love, right? Uh, marriage equality. Freedom from fear of being shot in your community, you know, gun safety reforms. Okay. Um, then you have economic freedom, we were just talking about, right? Freedom to be paid fairly for your work, uh, freedom for um, you know, for women to be paid the same for equal work, right? Equal pay for equal work. Um, freedom from paralyzing educational debt. Okay. I saw a lot of uh, um, uh, online the adjective that is used uh, a lot is crippling educational debt. And uh, I like paralyzing more. But anyway, we can talk about that. Uh, that was student loan relief, right? And then uh, uh, freedom to care for ourselves, for our families without losing our jobs, paid family leave, right? So um, uh, folks, adjectives are very, very important. We need, to, we need to use adjectives, you know? So paralyzing educational debt, you know? It, makes 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 it makes it visual right i mean you're you're picturing a person uh who really can't move because of all this debt and 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 maybe interest rates or whatever you know just uh um so that's um we're freeing that person you see with this with this policy you know so anyway um then we have democratic freedom right freedom to vote for your preferred candidate you know, constitutionally uh, um, protected freedom to vote, you know, um, hopefully one day we'll have that. Uh, freedom from right-wing politicians who attempt to rig the game, right? Constitutionally protected early vote for working parents. Um, political districts align with the intent of the U.S. Constitution. Freedom from the ultra-rich, uh, against the ultra-rich buying elections, you know, political donation transparency, campaign finance reform, right? So what do you think, what's one um, category of freedom that I didn't know it existed and that is missing from here? What do you think? I, I, give, you, I give you a hint, uh, global warming. So, okay, so I'll show what was that? Climate. Climate, yeah. Yeah, e environmental freedom, right? Yeah, so, so I'll show you basically. Um, so, so tell me, tell me policies. Uh, let's, let's actually look at a list that I found that's really good and let's figure out which category is which, okay? So I apologize, there's a, a lot of information here. Um, so, oh, oh goodness. Okay, so I guess... Uh, the black uh, thing I put in there has moved um, so you can actually see everything. Okay. Um, I spoiled the fun. 
<laughs> but um, anyway, so you can see uh, as far as economic freedom, uh, minimum wage is right there. Um, you know, the uh, um, affordable health care, right? Uh, um, Medicare, Medicaid, Affordable Care Act, paid family leave. Um, so, so all these things, right? And you see in uh, personal freedom, you have, which you already talked about, um, you know, safe and legal abortion, um, access to contraception, marriage equality. Um, uh, so, you know, pass the ERA, right? Pass the ERA, Equal Rights uh, Act. Um, you know, so things, things like that, right? Um, gun safety, okay? Uh, policies, laws against um, uh, our gun violence epidemic, okay? Um, and then you can see a democratic freedom um, that, um, let me see, uh, eliminate the filibuster, make the Senate more democratic, right? Um, and the dark money politics make, uh, um, you know, uh, campaign donations more transparent, right? Uh, reform political ethics, uh, reform ethics in the Supreme Court, you know? Um, so, um, in, in prisoner exploitation, let's see, then we have environmental freedom, right? Which is uh, climate and then cutting greenhouse gases, provide clean water, uh, those things, okay? Any, any other that is not mentioned here that you think is worth mentioning? Freedom, freedom from COVID vaccines. <laughs> freedom from COVID vaccines. Freedom from, uh, the COVID vaccines are the ones that give us the freedom from illness. Yeah. Freedom, freedom from COVID. Freedom, freedom from COVID. I like that better. Yeah, sorry. No, no problem. No problem. Freedom uh, over making decisions for your own body. Exactly. And that would be personal uh, uh, under the category of personal freedom, right? Well, yeah, I, I think religion <laughs> is important because the Republicans are really trying to make this a Christian country. I know. It's out of control, you know, for they, they really want to uh, have, you know, children in public schools, you know, recite the Ten Commandments or pray to the Christian God. Force right. them, basically. I mean, they're, they're, they're wild. They're wild. Yeah. Where would you where would you put that? Say in these categories, where would you put personal freedom? Uh, uh -huh. Personal freedom, right? Separation of church and state, for instance. Right. Say separation of church and state would be it would affect definitely personal freedom and it would affect your democratic freedom in a way too, right? All right. Uh, I'm going to move on. All right. So, so how about if you give me, um, you know, we've been doing a little bit of this, but basically this, uh, there was a big campaign, um, you know, last year called protect our freedoms. Okay. And so, um, and I, I'm, you know, I, I really, really, I think I thought it was great. And, uh, but anyway, so, so why don't you tell me an issue that you care about um, you know, or any issue, any, just pick up an issue and tell me, uh, give me a hashtag, give me a hashtag, freedom to blank or freedom from blank. Freedom to learn. Exactly. Right. So not telling children, not banning books or, 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 or restrict, you know, freedom, their ability, restricting their ability to obtain the critical thinking skills they need for college and the workforce, right? Critical uh, skills. So uh, what else? Freedom, freedom to vote. Sorry. Freedom to vote, exactly. What, freedom to live else? without gun violence. Exactly. And that would be also, we could say, what would, what would you, how would you put that in freedom from? Freedom from gun violence. Yep. And fear too, right? Yeah. Freedom from freedom, fear, right? Fear. Hmm. Freedom, freedom, you know. Freedom from occupation. What was that? Freedom from occupation. We fought the British to, to become a free country. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah. Freedom from, uh, 
you know, illegitimate um, occupation of one country or another. Look at uh, uh, Ukraine, for instance, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about freedom from tyranny? Yeah, freedom from tyranny, absolutely. Freedom from authoritarianism, authoritarianism. freedom from dictatorship. What was that? Yeah, authoritarianism. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. Freedom. So, yeah. Freedom to make reproductive family decisions without the exactly. state. Without, mm -hmm. without any politician interference, mm -hmm. interference from any right-wing politician or judge, right? Exactly. About freedom from fake facts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Freedom from, um, you know, from, from deception or uh, uh, basically freedom to, to, to learn the truth or freedom to, yeah. I would say protect the truth, right? It, it, as a hashtag, possibly. How freedom would you from talk hate, freedom from hate and prejudice? Yeah, oh, exactly. Nice. nice. Yeah. How how would you talk to Republicans that they feel that they are occupied by liberals? I know. It, it's just um, that's I have to their. Tell you, I know. I, I, we have to, we we have to pick our battles. Honestly, um, I I I would just um, unless they unless they start trouble, um, like say at a Thanksgiving dinner or a public place, you know, I would just leave them alone. Frankly, with their own conspiracy theories and everything, because uh, uh, you, we're not going to change them. Um, hmm. Fox and Fox. And the right wing uh, deceptive propaganda machine, they are very, very good at creating activists, the, the, the generating, generating um, you know, a brainwashing. They're, they're, they're amazing at brainwashing, unfortunately. Why, why couldn't we tell them that the civil war has been settled? We, can't, we don't have to tell them it has been won, but mm -hmm. has been settled a long time ago. <laughs> Yeah, but I so, don't. So I hear you. The bigger nation. I hear you, but the thing is that, and they, but if we, here's the thing: when we lead with facts like that, right? Our That's our right. impact is limited in in is our impact is limited in in effective. It's not as effective as it can be. You know, we should lead with something like, listen, whether you're in the south or the north, regardless of whether you grow up poor or rich we're all in the same boat, right? I mean, we're all Americans. We want what's best for our children. You know, there's no, there's, uh, there's no need for division and, you know, and, and, and relegate, you know, refighting a civil war. And, and uh, you know, these are things that belong in the past. You know, we need to, we need to look at the future. We, we need to look at making progress. We need to improve in our democracy, not, you know, tearing apart, you know, so. Anyway, we need to inspire people, you know. So when we when we just go at them with facts, um, you know, unfortunately, with some people, it just goes in one ear out the other, you know. So anyway, so I'm going to move on. Basically, this is sort of my list, um, you know, like things that I came up with. You know, uh, one that I really, really like is freedom to thrive, and that one I think worked well in Texas. They used it in um, in uh, in political ads, freedom to thrive. Okay, um, and so um, so that's uh, that's that talks about prosperity, and and we are the party of prosperity for all. You know, inclusive prosperity. So uh, freedom to love, freedom from mental health issues, freedom from fear. Right, all these things we've talked about. It's all part of protect our freedoms campaign. Um, this is basically. Um, this is from Anat Shenko Osorio's uh, presentation to Center for American Progress from a couple of, a few weeks ago. And um, this is just how Protect Our Freedoms, the campaign, um, you know, was being used um, last year. Okay. Um, so um, anyway, now I want to take a break um, just uh, with him very abstract here. So I wanted to show you a video. Okay. And then, and then we can analyze it afterwards. Okay. Um, so you may have watched it, you may have seen it, but basically it's the California governor 
um, uh, uh, in, is an ad uh, that that they he run in Florida, you know, and uh, uh, which take takes guts. People like that, um, and so in this in this clip, uh, they, I have basically Pod Save America and Dan, Dan Pfeiffer uh, interviewing Brian Tyler Cohen, and so um, so if you don't mind, I'm just going to show it. And then we'll we'll analyze it uh, at the end, okay? And we will hear their analysis, and then we'll talk about it, okay? So just I'd love to hear what you all think, okay? Let me see if I can share this. Um, let me see. My name is Antonia Krista. I only see in one eye, and I was born this way. If Newsom wants to take on this fight, I'm in. Let's go. The best campaigns find one piece of viral footage and they hammer it. Welcome to Political Experts React, where we break down political ads and media, explain what the people behind them are trying to accomplish, and decide whether or not they did a good job. I'm Dan Pfeiffer, former communications director for Barack Obama. And joining me today is Brian Tyler Cohen, a progressive political commentator and host of the podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen. Brian Tyler Cohen, welcome to Political Experts React. Great to have you here. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. Big fan of this show and the channel more broadly. And I would like to point out that you were wearing a Vote Save America shirt, which we very much appreciate here at Crooked Media. That's right. See, that's just professionalism right, right there. Wearing the concert t-shirt to the concert. Yes. All right. <laughs> so today we're going to look at ads where the people who made the ad, it seemed like their explicit purpose was trying to go viral. I wanted to have you on because you were one of the foremost experts in the Democratic Party about how social media works how to get your message out there, how to get things to go viral. So thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Looking forward to it. Let's do it. All right. The first ad we're going to watch is from California Governor Gavin Newsom, who is running an ad, not in California, but in Florida. It's Independence Day. So let's talk about what's going on in America. Freedom is under attack in your state. Your Republican leaders, they're banning books, making it harder to vote restricting speech in classrooms, even criminalizing women and doctors. I urge all of you living in Florida to join the fight or join us in California, where we still believe in freedom, freedom of speech, freedom to choose, freedom from hate, and the freedom to love. Don't let them take your freedom. Paid for by Newsom for California Governor 2022. I want to ask you a two-part question about this ad. First, what do you think about the ad itself? And then what do you think about the message in the ad? First of all, I love this because it does uh, accomplish two things. The first is that irrespective of the ad, Newsom is fighting. And like we so desperately need fighters. So if Newsom wants to push back and take on this fight and not immediately defer to compromise and bipartisanship, I'm in. Let's fucking go. As for the ad itself, he hits the nail on the head in terms of freedom being under attack. And he uses that word purposefully because you've noticed that Republicans love to co-opt the ideas that they're simultaneously attacking. And so they'll crow about freedom on a daily basis, all while stripping people of their freedom to read certain books, stripping people of their freedom to cast ballots, stripping people of their freedom to marry who they want. You know, I think it's smart for Gavin Newsom to just Say it. Taking this message, running it on an ad in Florida, taking on explicitly Ron DeSantis, who is the you know, putative leading non-Trump candidate to be the Republican nominee, is smart. Like, I don't think they spent a lot of money on this ad. I don't think it ran many times, but you and I are talking about it. It has gone viral. It has been the source of a lot of press coverage. And so that is very smart and good. And I think Newsom clearly understands the way you get attention is controversy and conflict. And so running an ad against Ron DeSantis does that. Republicans are leading with their chin on all of these quote unquote cultural issues. And too many Democrats are scared yeah. to take them on, right? And so every one of those issues has a 60, 70, 80% disapproval rating. So if we should make them own it, so I think it's really smart. I'm, I'm going to channel my inner Dan Pfeiffer here, but <laughs> you know, these are fights that we should have because these issues, abortions, book bans, LGBT rights, voting rights, unite the Democratic Party and divide the Republicans. And so long as we keep pounding these issues, substantive issues, and not letting the GOP turn the next election into the usual circus of migrant caravans and socialism, then we have our best shot at winning. The next ad we're going to watch is from Herschel Walker, a Republican running for Senate in Georgia. Okay, uh, let me go back to uh, presentation. Um, all right. So, um, did it, was everyone able to, to watch the, the clip? Yeah. Okay. What, 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 what did you folks think? What, what do you think? Huh? 
what do you think about the ad itself, for instance? You know, um, what you know, Gav Gavin, uh, Governor Newsom's uh, message. Awesome. About time. It's about brilliant. time, absolutely. All about freedom. <laughs> hey, there's a the here tonight. This is a liar. Called him on it. Yeah. He brought it. He was. We're always responding after it. He brought it first. There's a bunch of us here tonight from Florida. I see about oh, really? six of us. Yeah, I'm I'm a former Fairfax person. I now live in Lee County, Florida. I did not see this ad. I wish I did. I can't mm -hmm. wait to share it. I hope you're going to give it to us all after we attend. But um, yeah, the messaging is spot on. And just to add a little angle to this, I know you try and stay on the positive so that you don't um, turn people off. But here in Florida, we're ready to fight fascism. I mean, that's yep. the work that we are dealing with here. And I want to know what the backlash is to that because we haven't taken it on yet as a message. We're still organizing, reorganizing after the hurricane here in Lee County. But I'd love to hear your opinion on that. Thanks. I mean, you, you, you guys in, in Florida and the folks in Texas, you're in the trenches. I mean, you're, mm -hmm. you're in the trenches. Um, and so it's just, uh, uh, yeah, I, but, uh, yeah, as I, as I, as I, but I keep saying that, um, that, you know, we need to, we need to start positive, you know, we need to follow message structure. It's important. It's important to lead with shared value. In fact, in this ad, if we would have made this ad, mm -hmm. I would have said to Gavin Newsom, just, just spend a tiny bit more on that intro, you know? Uh, just he starts saying, hey, it's Independence Day, folks. Um, and I would add a sentence there. It's a time when we all celebrate this great country and the freedoms that we all have. You know, just something there. Just add add something there. Just a, a nice share value. And then start, start naming the villain and the violation of values, you know? But for our friends in Florida and Texas, I would have... Definitely say you need to use the values, villain, vision, structure that uh, Federico and messaging experts uh, agree are yeah. best, and and not get into the this fight uh, uh, mentality where you you might fall into the trap of saying, well, we don't do this, or uh, without saying what the values are and. And you don't want to fall into the trap of using the same words that uh, DeSantis uses. And so uh, do it differently. And I think results will follow. But it's, but, uh, but I, I grant you, it's, you're in the trenches. It's a, I mean, you're in a tough, tough place um, with that governor. Um, uh, Eileen, you have a, your hand up. Yeah, I, I want to know specifically, I mean, here in Florida, we hear a lot, I'm not a socialist like you are, you know, Democrats are socialists. We have a lot of immigrants here from South America who think that Democrats are socialists, the message yeah. is drilled into them. So I want to know if we counter with fascists, you know, it, is there a downside to that? I know you're you're trying to stay on the positive. Um, I I've always tried to stay on the positive. I don't think I've changed anything doing that. I, and I think a lot of us are are like we're ready to fight. We feel like Ukraine here. I hear you. I hear you. I hear. You. I mean, I I I just um, yeah. I mean, I the thing is that the problem with calling them fascists, which I believe. Um, is if if you just go mainly with that message, you know, they, 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 we we don't have a moral brand, you know, we we're vulnerable, we don't have a moral brand. So the, so when we talk about fascism and all the awful things they do, we are not talking about our moral values and the positive intentions that we have for the things we say and do, um, and 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 we just sort of make our the, the our democratic moral moral void. Uh, worse, um, you know, it's, 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 yeah, I mean, it's, it's tough. You're in a tough state. And look, I've, I, I have, uh, I've known Venezuelan Americans who are 
the solution to managing work complexity and boosting productivity across the business. Oops, I don't know what that was. For. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I know I'm a South American American, um, and I know Venezuelans who are, um, you know, who, who are Republican. I'm like, I had this guy I used to work with, and it's like, wait a second. So you left Venezuela because of an authoritarian government linked to Russia, and you are and you come here and you vote for an authoritarian political party tied to Russia. Is it? Am I hearing you clearly, right? It's just, um, and the, yeah, the other side is very, has a very, very well uh, 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 run um, uh, communication machine, a propaganda machine. And so, yeah, anyway, so let, let's move on. Let's, well, let's, if, let's, I, if I'm, I just want to, I don't want to leave that yet because yeah. with the name calling is, is off-putting. And, and once you start doing that, then really that's in the, uh, the Republicans' wheelbase. That's what they want you to do instead of you stating a positive value and then demonstrating how they are the villains and then yeah, finding up exactly. the decision. Okay? Well, you, you have to avoid that trap. Uh, um, so anyway. Look how that politicians answer reporters' question. The reporter tries to narrow down and limit your answer to what they want to hear. You don't respond to that as a good politician. You say what you do believe and what you stand for. So I Bingo. wouldn't fight socialists. I'd just describe freedom. And on the fashion exactly. issue uh, that I'm wrestling with myself, I'm thinking a word to talk about is not give them the label, um, but to talk about how you don't want to be controlled. You want to make decisions on your own. You talk about the things that actually fasts do without saying the word. Yeah, I don't that's know. A good I'm one. skeptical. Um, it's like if we were in Germany in the 30s, would we not have used the word fascism? I mean, there are aren't there certain labels that will trigger people, will motivate people, to, and no, I mean, cause them to can, see more clearly. Yeah. Good point. I would. I mean, I would use it. I would go ahead and use it. But 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 just like like Greg said, just lead with shared values. You know, brand yeah. yourself. As, as as go, you know, try to um, yeah. I mean, just just you try both. to be the moral one. The moral, be the moral one. Be the be the be the the. You, you define what it means to be American. You define it. You know. Yeah, I would still use fascism, but then yeah, just our values because we got. I mean, this is this is these are difficult times. I don't think we can pussyfoot around. No, you know? no, we can't. We can't. No. We can't whitewash it. It's it's right. uh it's critical. Yeah. I mean, what would I, going I would is... ask if I was in Florida and somebody called me a socialist, I'd say, well, do you, um, uh, you know, I, I get social do, security. Yeah. Don't, don't you, do you want to lose, <laughs> right. Do you want to lose your Medicare and your social security? Um, <laughs> yeah. do you want to be able to read the books that you choose to read? Do you, do you want, uh, you know, do you the want freedom FHA to... loan, a mortgage? Exactly. You know, exactly. Um, yeah, you point, that, point that out. Exactly. You worship. Yeah, exactly. You exactly. To tell you to who, who to worship. Yeah. Point out the irony. Point out the this irony. Why Newsom was so good because he told them, and then he ended it by saying, come to, come to California where the beaches are beautiful. Yeah, I yeah. thought it was great. When I saw that ad, I, I felt like jumping up and saying, finally, a Democrat exactly. willing to fight. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. But see, and the thing is the that the president it, did to them at, in, his, in his speech. And that's what he does yeah. to them every day. And they don't understand it. They get kicked in the ass every, excuse me, every day. And they don't understand it. They don't know what's, what's hitting them hmm. because they don't understand him. And he's but see, we need, but we need, but we need more, more democratic elected officials to speak like that and to feel yeah. in terms of freedom. And we need exactly. more of them. All our elected yeah. officials, because, all because should be out there just, saying yeah, these because, things. Because, yeah. Yeah. Just just Newsom by himself is not going to make a difference. But of but course. that you know. Yeah. Absolutely right. But why aren't they? Are they too afraid of? No, they don't. They don't. They don't know. They really We're don't know. A, a better way of communicating. Yeah. yeah they, they don't. Know. They don't know. They don't know, and they're all. They yeah. they look the mindset. This is a mindset that we Democrats okay. have that we've been using for decades. You know that 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 you know politician 
he thinks all I need to do is to compromise, find the middle ground, you know, but, but what's the middle ground between democracy and fascism? Exactly. What's the middle ground between the truth and a lie? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? We're, there is no uh, middle ground. And we need it's younger well, politicians that grew up in a different era. Yeah. The, um, they've also, the Republicans have also groomed their people through their churches to yeah. tie, tie religion in with their politics and and um, their religions, their religion is authoritarian. Yes. And so that's Absolutely. that's what they've become accustomed to. And they they have to have people tell them what to do and what to think because they don't know any better. And and it's truly a cult. And mm -hmm. cool. we can't speak to those people. They're their, a lot of their minds are not going to be changed. You're right. Um, My sister. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's uh, let's move on, please. I'm going to mute all. And um, yeah, it's good conversation. Really good yeah. conversation, folks. Um, so, um, and and I agree. We're in a tough spot. You know, as a country, we're in a tough spot. Um, you know, I mean, just just when you talk to people, just just prioritize. Um, given your your story just tell them a story you know like my story for instance is you know I, I, why am i concerned so concerned right now okay because i even though i was born in in america i grew up in argentina during a right wing military dictatorship where there was no freedom of, to vote there was no freedom of the press there was no freedom of assembly okay so and 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 when i saw january 6 and when I see all the efforts to, you know, to attack the freedom to vote of some Americans, it, 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 it's, it, it's scary. It's scary. I mean, if it's scary for America, imagine for people like me who grew up in an authoritarian regime, you know, I mean, it's, it's, that's why I'm, <laughs> I'm putting so much time and effort and research into helping out, you know. So anyway, so let, let's, let's focus on, here's one thing, another thing that a lot of Democrats don't, uh, don't, don't understand, in my opinion, is what is a brand? A brand, okay? You got corporations like Geico. They're masters at branding, okay? You see they get the green gecko everywhere. Um, Target, you walk, in, you walk into a Target store and you will see that, that red Target, uh, you know, a thousand times, right? You walk out with the Target bag, right? So branding, okay? And we need a democratic moral brand that's very clear. Uh, so what is a brand? The sum total of all visual, non-visual, verbal, non-verbal, tangible, non-tangible elements that help to identify, form, create, and influence unique and positive associations, mental associations for a product, a service, a political party that differentiates, differentiates it from its competition, creates a meaning and value and preference in people's minds, okay? Brand, we need to focus on it, okay? So now, uh, when I talk about leading with anger, okay? So here's an email um, I got from Nancy Pelosi's PAC, okay? Um, the, uh, the subject line, appalled, okay? The first line in the email, I'm so disgusted, I can hardly type this email, okay? All right, there is an example of leading with anger and fear, okay? So this is the, this is the typical way for Democrats to lead messages. I'm not saying that we all, this is, you know, there, we, we lead messages in all kinds of ways, okay? But this is one that, that one structure that we follow and that, is, and that is, is, is not as effective as it could be, you know? We could be, we could be going uh, for a, a larger share of the swing voters if we switch this to, you know, the three V uh, that we're gonna talk about, okay? So, um, so this is uh, that's what I'm. This is what I'm talking about. Moving from anger, hope, action to shared values, problem, solution. Okay, so, um, also known as the uh, three V. Uh, so values, villain, vision. Right. First, start. With, you lead with shared values. You name the villain and the violation of American values, and you end with a positive vision for America. Um, so, uh, so then. This is, you know, sort of a typical message, right? So Republicans are the only thing standing in the way of solutions other developed countries have implemented to nearly eliminate mass shootings, okay? Fortunately, we have a Democratic candidate running in your district 
wants blah, 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 blah. Will that Democratic candidate can with your vote this November, right? Anger, we give them a little bit of hope and then a call to action at the end, okay? So that's kind of typical Democratic um, communication messaging, okay? All right, here, so basically what I'm, uh, this is another thing that's important, okay? Any well-informed communications person can write well-researched talking points, okay? But very few people can write well-framed messages, okay? And 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 uh, so my hope is that this this ability is democratized, that that everyone can do this, can can write well-framed messages, okay? And that this is not just the domain of a well-funded presidential campaign; that everybody can do this. A campaign for for, 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 you know, county board and for school board and dog catcher. Everybody should be able to learn how to properly frame uh, messages, okay? So now this is something from Anat Schenker Osorio, ASO, okay? The head of ASO Communications, okay? Um, so um, we lead, and we, I showed this before, and I apologize for using the same one. It's just that it's very clear, okay? So we lead with shared values. Americans, value our freedoms. Notice that she is using the plural, freedoms, not singular. The singular is a little more associated with the other side, uh, the other side's mindset and worldview. Freedoms, plural, is more associated with us Democrats, okay? But so, but Trump Republicans or MAGA Republicans or, or Republican politicians want to take away freedom from all who do not look, live, and love like them, okay? Uh, and then, then we connect things also through the lens of freedom, okay? From freedom to decide if and when to grow our families, to freedom to vote, freedom for our families to thrive. And, and MAGA Republicans want to control us, use violence to overthrow elections and block the policies we favor. So. Uh, and then we, we end with a positive vision, okay? Americans must join together across race, place, and party to protect our freedoms, okay? And then basically we move on from that, okay? So here is what I was saying about the race class narrative, okay? Which is, it's, 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 it's very important, okay? As a good way to lead messages, okay? No matter what we look like, where we come from, or our party, most of us believe for democracy to work for all of us, it must include us all. So the MAGA Republicans seize control of the US House by silencing uh, the voices of black, brown, young, and new Americans in order to rule for the wealthy few, okay? And then we end with a positive vision, okay? Just as generations of, of us defeated enslavers, segregationists, women's suffrage deniers, marriage equality destroyers, and Trump himself, we will defeat Trumpism and fight for liberty and justice for all, okay? So we we'll protect our freedoms. And so anyway, um, so this is just another example, right? Um, and, 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 and it's important that we use that language about the US House of Representatives, even when we talk about the biggest threat that we face right now as a country, which is uh, for the the MAGA-controlled U.S. House to force a, uh, a national debt default, which would be catastrophic, okay? Um, downgrading of our debt, um, interest rates going e even higher than they are. Uh, I mean, it's just the kind of harm that would please the GOP, okay? Um, so across races, places, and parties, Americans who saw uh, 2022 election as a choice between freedom and fascism, voted to protect our families and our futures. And Democrats held the Senate and key state houses, okay? But by creating barriers to voting and dividing us, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we go on. And then we end with a positive vision where we say, you know, we want to extend the promise of liberty and justice to all, okay? So, um, and so anyway, so this is another thing that I got that's really good. Um, Can I ask a question, please, about what you just shared? Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, let me go back up. Uh, this yeah. one? Well, any of the, these examples. So the model you said is that you said we should move from anger, hope, action to shared values, hope, and action. But all of the examples that you just put up have shared values. Then they have something to get us angry at that, you know, the, the other side is doing. And then it has the hope 
uh, and uh, action at the end. So I'm not understanding exactly how to do the shared values, hope, action, because none of these seem to be doing, uh, you know, they have this extra step in there. And so are we supposed to put shared values, get them angry, then do the hope and the action? No, no, no. First, inspire them. First, inspire your audience. First, right. first, reach this for the high moral values, ground. Right? But you can see the format of this. So you're there. The inspiration, the shared values is the first yellow. But then there's yes. the negative in the in between the yellow. And if you go into the other two before this, it was the same format. That's right. That's right. And and that's on purpose. Yeah. You basically the negative is sandwiched in between. Uh, you lead. You you want to appeal to. You know. You start with shared values. You reach for the high moral ground. You, you, you appeal to people's better angels to start with. You set the high bar. You set the high bar. You define who we are as Americans. We as Democrats and we as Americans. This is who we are. The, you know, what does you, you redefine patriotism. You define love of country. You define freedom. You do all of that on the lead. And then you name the villain and the violation of the values. But you have to name, the, you have to name them. And you have to name name the, the awful things they're doing, but you sandwich it in between. And then you end positive if you can, if you have enough space. But but it's very important that you start, you know, high in some way. You start on the with the high moral ground in some way or fashion. You know, I know, I know, which doesn't when you look at it, it seems like, well, we're doing the same thing. It's just it just seems trivial, doesn't it? But it's not, it's not. When you, when, when all of us are doing this, when all of us are leading with shared values, when politicians do this, okay, it's going to make a difference. We're going, to, we're going to have, the American voter is going to have a sense of who we are as Democrats in terms of values. Because right now they don't know. We, they don't know. They are, and, they are, and when people don't know your moral values, they assume the worst. You know, it's just human nature. So uh, the other, from the other side, they know, they have the basics, right? Well, the other side, they're, you know, they, 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 uh, they're, they're pro-growth, right? Um, you know, they're for economic development. So the economy is going to work better with them. I mean, that's the crazy thing that people think, right? And then, uh, and they really going to protect my family, right? Uh, and, and so, so, but it, they took them years to get that to sink in in voters' minds, you know? And and we need to start somewhere, and we just need to we need to we need to we need to do this. <laughs> so, even if it seems trivial, it's not. Once everyone is doing it, you know. We need more ads like the one from Gavin Newsom talking about freedom. We need to redefine freedom. The problem right now, and this is something that George Lake of uh, Professor Lake of from um, you know the basically the founder of this movement, uh, George Lake of. Um, he talked about in the 2014 book is that what the other side has done over the years is redefine the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, right? Re redefine the right to life as, as make people associate with biological fetuses and fertilize eggs mm -hmm. and the right to freedom and liberty as related to guns, right? Mm -hmm. And purchasing guns and ammunition. Okay. So we need to uncover, we need to expand this ultra narrow the ultra narrow definitions of the right to life and the right to freedom it's up to each of us every one of us to expand those definitions to redefine what it means to be american you know to redefine freedom so anyway um so uh, may i say something given yeah, the poor state of messaging by democrats across the board um, and the fact that we did win recontrol of the Senate and almost got the House, I mean, voters are kind of ahead of us on this. They're voting these values without us telling them. So it's fertile ground out there. Absolutely. It is. It is. And I, I agree. We, 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 uh, we can still win elections, but the way I see it, there is no need for us Democrats to struggle against the other party. I mean, this it's a morally bankrupt cult. Right. There's, there's, it's absolutely, the, how can the GOP still today be a viable political party? This, it, yeah. it, it, you know, it makes no sense. 
we need we need all this. We need this change. We need to change the way we communicate. Absolutely. Yeah. How about how about in a little way, comedy? How about a little comedy in in all? Yeah, of go this? ahead. My my ending of most of these things when I get into a discussion with a MAGA Republican, I tell him, "Look, your symbol is the elephant, and my symbol is an ass. So here's what I'm going to do." I'll kiss your elephant if you kiss my ass. <laughs> that's, that's good. That, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good I one. Ended on, that, on that basis, and we shake hands and walk away. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> that's right, a little comedy on. in all of this. I, yeah. I like that. I like that. You know, and storytelling, you know, which is which is great, which is great. I love it. So, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, as usual, I have way too much more, much yeah. more material than time. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep moving, okay? Uh, but so, so this is something that I got that's really good, okay? So do's and don'ts, okay? When we talk about uh, MAGA Republicans in the House of Representatives, and uh, you know, so think of those F words, okay? Freedom, family, future, okay? Um, so here's one thing we don't want to do. We don't want to engage in their three ring circus to get into process and hypocr hypocrisy, right? We just leave aside that, you know, they are hypocrites because no, leave it aside, okay? What do we do? We go on the offense, take the high moral ground and lean into values, our values of freedom and family and future. That's who we are as Democrats, you know, center the voters and we the people, you know? So, um, Anyway, so moving on, this is something that ASO Communication is a national consortium and the research collaborative, great groups to follow folks. And so, so they put out this, uh, you know, of course you have three columns, right? They watch words to embrace, words to replace, and be why. And so um, on the left, for instance, um, you know, we don't wanna say that the other side won the house or won the majority. No, they seized control of the house. They took control of the house, they hijacked the house, okay? Um, you know, and they are anti-American, okay? Um, you know, and they, and, and we talk about MAGA Republicans, Trumpist Republicans, okay? Um, we don't talk about extreme Republicans. We just, we, 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 you know, it's more like MAGA Republicans, okay? And we have to be careful not to say just Republicans by themselves. We have to be disciplined in um, not, you know, we have to leave the door open for those disaffected Republicans, you know, um, you know, you know, they're in our families, you know, uh, they're in, they're, they're in our work for, in, you know, workplace, they're, you know, so, you know, it's, it's, it's very tricky, the situation, but we, we have to leave the door open, okay, at least a little bit, okay, we talk in terms of MAGA Republicans, okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna move on, folks, uh, um, now, these are sentence starters, they're one of the organizations that follow, I think it was, uh, uh, yeah, words that win uh, put together at some point, okay? So these are things that we can use to start, uh, to, to write our own messages, okay? Um, so as I mentioned, you know, you incorporate the race class narrative, okay? Um, so here's one down below. Uh, this is a way to lead, right, with shared values. Um, so you can start in state America, right? In Virginia, we show up for each other, okay? We show up for each other in times of need. Okay, um, you know, we all deserve to feel safe in our communities, okay? Um, so whether you're in the city, the suburbs or rural areas, whether you're white or black, Hispanic or Asian, okay? Um, you know, regardless of your sexual orientation or where you live. Um, so, so we lead like that because the other side, guarantee you, is going to bring up race. And we as Democrats, we don't shy away from race and class. We don't, we address it and we address it this way, okay? So we bring it up, we bring it up ourselves, okay? The other side, you know the three things the other side brings up, right? It's race, it's trans, and it's crime, right? It's race, crime, and trans, okay? And so, so uh, anyway, so, how so about, moving on. How about on. taxes? How about taxes? That's true too, that's true too. But they're so, they're into cultural wars right now. I mean, they're, they're, um, more than that, uh, yeah. Um, but anyway, so um, then then we name the villain, 
okay? And we have to do this, um, you know, and, and, and really we don't actually, I disagree with that top line, a handful of lawmakers, no, a handful of MAGA Republicans, we named them, we named them MAGA Republicans, okay? Or Trump Republicans, Republican politicians, you know? We don't leave it vague, we don't leave it vague, okay? Because, um, because they're, they're, the other side's default uh, when once they have no answer, no way out, they are in trouble because they're, they're because they're so morally bankrupt. Then their default is well, all politicians are the same. They're all the same. They're all they're all corrupt, right? And that is not true. And so so that's why uh, we need to be careful in this in this how we lead this this section, okay, of the message. Um, sentence. So this is the vision, the the, the last part. Um, you know. By joining together across our differences, we can achieve blah, 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 okay? Um, by joining together to demand proven solutions like blah, 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 okay? Um, so, so we come together essentially, okay? Um, to Stronger together, right? Back to that. Uh, we're all in it together, okay? So anyway, now this is the biggest threat right now. This is... This was a huge focus of President Biden's State of the Union address, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, this month. Okay, this is the national debt default uh, risk that we have in our hands, right? Um, so, uh, MAGA Republicans, uh, I mean, they they want to shut down the government uh, uh, and, and 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 inflict harm, right? And uh, you know, if we go into a national debt default, as I mentioned, it'd be catastrophic. Now. Uh, President Biden, he used this frame during the State of the Union address. He used the hostage frame, okay? Um, he said something to the uh, effect of, you don't take, you know, you don't take the economy hostage, um, you know, with your demands, basically, right? Um, so they, you can talk about economic terrorism here, you know? Um, and, 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 you know, you start positive. You start positive, you, you, you lead with, with, you know, America the Great, and then you talk about economic terrorism but on, from, from MAGA Republicans, okay? Um, or dead limit terrorism, okay? Um, if we're going to have, she, she writes here something very beautiful. I love it, okay? If you, if you think that's too extreme to talk of MAGA Republicans as economic or uh, uh, terrorist, Okay, let's have that argument publicly. Let's have that argument, okay? Whether or not this constitutes terrorism. Let's, let's do it, yeah. So, um, so we want them fighting in their backyard, not ours, you know? So uh, if the MAGA Republicans can force cuts to Social Security and Medicare by putting a gun uh, to the head of the US economy, what will happen when the debt ceiling comes up again? Will they demand a federal uh, safe and legal abortion ban? National laws attacking the freedom to vote? You know, so this is something that Dan Pfeiffer wrote. You know, it's really, uh, I, I like that. Um, and by the way, the former president, this is something you can bring up. The former president is responsible for one quarter of our national, the national debt that we now have to pay. So we're paying, we're paying Trump's bills, okay? Um, so anyway, this is the other frame that Antonia Scadden recommends, okay? So, so, so um, this is, is not the right, is the, the right place, the right time, okay? Now, I, I put this in here, we went over this last time, but, um, you know, when you have a family gathers for Thanksgiving meal, it's time to give thanks and focus on family, right? So the budget decisions, okay, uh, we make during budget negotiations, okay? The right place, the right place and right time for everything, right, in life. So um, we, dem and by the way, talk about responsibility. We Democrats are the party of responsibility, okay? We take resp our responsibilities seriously. It's our job to protect the American economy and our global reputation. It's our responsibility to pay America's bills, okay? We don't default on our debts. We pay America's bills. So any, any thoughts about this? We, 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 went, we went over this last time, so I don't want to dwell too much on it. Okay, so I'm going I'm to move on. So 
Now, this is a little bit of who we are, right? Which I think is, is something very, very important, okay? We need to know who we Democrats are, okay? So we've been talking about this, empathy, for instance, uh, interdependence, cooperation, okay? So empathy is the driving force behind everything we do. This is Antonia Scatton writing, okay? Uh, interdependence, the other side, you know, is talking about radical independence, John Wayne model, uh, you know, uh, pull yourself up by the bootstraps, okay? We talk about interdependence, okay? We're, you know, we're all in it together and we help each other out in times of need, you know? Just like the Marines help each uh, wounded Marine, they don't leave a wounded Marine on the battlefield. No, they take that to safety, you know? We do the same in times, you know, when we have a hurricane, we, you know, we help each other out. That's, that's the American way. Um, so cooperation um, and, uh, you know, equality uh, over hierarchy, freedom over license, okay? What the other side believes, we believe in freedom. The other side believes in license, okay? License is permission, permission, moral permission to pollute, to discriminate, to incite violence, to spread viruses, okay? To inflict harm, essentially, to weaken us as a country, as a people and as a country. Um, so anyway, um, this, I don't wanna to dwell too much on this, but shared prosperity, we talk about shared prosperity, inclusive prosperity, broad prosperity, okay? Um, and so the other side will talk about scarcity, we'll bring up scarcity, okay? Um, and, uh, you know, it's all about taxes. It's your tax dollars that I wanna give back to you, right? It's, it's um, you know, the important thing is knowing, you know, taxes are investments. Taxes are investments on our future, investments on our infrastructure, investments in critical service that we all Americans need, okay? All right, so cooperation, so the, I wanted to get to this actually. How do we talk about government? Because this is crucial. The other side has been vilifying government, you know, since the eighties, consistently, you know, starting with Reagan, okay? So what do you think is a good way to talk about government? What do you think? So, so, so go ahead, go, um, any, any thoughts about this? No wrong answers, all good. How should we talk about government? It's, it's, it's our government, we choose our representatives. Yes, exactly, exactly. Any other thoughts? Big, big government has led to big lifestyles, big, big economy, big yeah. progress. Yeah, government investments have led to all kinds of things, you know, like that, that the medications that we use, you know, they, 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 they were often researched at, the, you know, at the national, you know, NIH, right? Uh, funded by taxpayer dollars, right? Um, saving lives, you know? Vaccines. We, ha we have to emphasize that the, without big government, you would not have had the, all the growth that we've had in the last 60 or 80 years, okay? <clears throat> um, yeah, exactly, exactly. And, uh, Going back to the Florida big socialism argument, yeah. well, that democratic socialism, the social security, which the Republicans said was democratic out of control socialism that would destroy the country back in the 30s. And in the 60s, yeah. Republicans called Medicare and Medicaid out of control democratic socialism that would destroy the country. And in the 2000s, they called Obamacare and trying to make health care affordable for everyone to be unaffordable, crazy democratic socialism that would destroy the country. Now, which of those was anybody we talked to, even if they're Republican, would live without? Exactly. You know, very, very they attack in very popular programs. And, and let's say, you know, what Social Security and Medicare are, they are promises. They are promises that we as Americans make. That we're, we, it's a promise, an intergenerational promise, right? That one generation promises to, a, to another generation, right? If we you look at the track record, three times Republicans said democratic socialism would destroy the country. And these are three things that Americans would not live without. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So we have a pretty exactly. bad track record. I I love I love that uh, President Biden put uh, uh, the uh, the Florida 
Senator uh, Scott on the spot, you know? I mean, it, that, that gives you a clue of just how, how, how reckless the other side has become for Rick Scott to put out this, this junk. I mean, he represents <laughs> countless seniors in his- Joe was team. too kind. He failed to point out that in Columbia Health, Rick Scott oversaw the greatest attempt to defraud Medicare of hundreds of millions of dollars in the history of the program. And he just got out of the com company in time to avoid responsibility for it. Yeah. But his yeah. fingerprints were all over it. It was him. Absolutely. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what Antonia Scatton writes about government. Okay. Okay. So government is a, can someone read it instead of me? Go ahead. <coughs> <laughs> oh, 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 are you okay? Okay, I tell you what, I'll, I'll read it, okay? So government is a cooperative effort, okay? Yeah, a, a critical word, cooperative effort by the American people to take care of each other, one another, and improve our quality of life. We use government to provide public benefits that contribute to our shared prosperity, to invest wisely in the American people and in our common future, to ensure that each other's basic needs are met, to protect each other from harm and to protect everybody's freedoms. Antonia wrote rights. I replaced it with freedoms, okay? Um, but uh, what do you think about this? I love it. Government is a cooperative effort by the American people to take care of one another to improve our quality of life, period. And, and the way I would put it is, we are the government. We pick our leaders and we are the government and the government is us. I, I think it's great. I think it's, it's true, okay? I, I, I mean, can you I, imagine, I, I, can you, yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say, yeah. It would be good to, to good to put in here somehow that fact that by helping each other, we are helping ourselves. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, true. That's true. And if we if we the reason we have so many problems today is because we have so many poor, and we have crime as a result. We have people who are not getting educated. Um, government is failing. In that respect, we need to get everybody to do to, to be uh, um, educated to, to have the same standard of, of living basically when you anyway. but government government keeps america strong you know yeah. government has kept america strong for generations absolutely. you know with public investments go absolutely. ahead go absolutely ahead. i think government is also a, a sanctuary you know which is a term usually uh associated with churches but it's a sanctuary it's it's uh, a place of safety when when hurricanes strike uh you know it's it's government that helps uh helps everyone yeah fema right yeah fema yeah exactly you know what what would america be without a government what would corporations be like can you imagine the abuse? Can you imagine the abuse yeah. if there wasn't a government sort of keeping track on corporations and just keeping them from becoming too abusive? Yeah, well, look you know? what happened in Turkey with all the with all the um, with the earthquake and all of the buildings that just collapsed because mm. of uh, the lack of oversight from the government, corruption. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. That goes yeah. back to the point of being free. And freedom, which is one of the very core values of our country being built on freedom. And when that freedom is being um, attacked, That's right. mm -hmm. attacked, then we must protect it. And that attack is not only from foreign countries, but right here with homegrown agents who are attempting to overthrow our government, i.e. our ex-president. Yes. And we must protect that at all costs. 
Yes, I agree. I agree. Freedom is on the line. Uh, on the, yeah. Freedom is, yeah, it's absolutely. So let's 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 move on. And then, uh, so basically, in terms um, in terms of government, right? So this is something George Lake of, like as I mentioned, the the parent of this whole movement to improve the way we Democrats communicate. Okay, he's written a number of books, uh, and so. Um, he he wrote, you know, he talks, he often talks about government of, by, and for the people. He quotes Lincoln, okay? Um, and so um, government is a tool that we use to cooperate on a larger scale, okay? And cooperation is humanity's superpower. Cooperation is America's superpower, okay? And we, we, we cooperate through the government, okay? We, government is something... I can, we can achieve through government things that we as Americans cannot achieve on our own, okay? So now this is something that Lakoff wrote and he posted on, on Mastodon. Uh, Lakoff has um, um, moved away from Twitter because of all the censure um, that is going on in Twitter, just really um, pretty bad. Um, in a democracy, the private depends on the public. You know, businesses depend on public resources, roads, bridges, highways, sewers, water supply, airports, air traffic control, patents, airports, you know, so, 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 right? Individuals depend on clean air, water, safe food, um, public safety, access to education, healthcare, housing, employment. Without such public resources, you are not free. You are not free. The public provides freedom uh, the public investments provide freedom. Individualism begins after the roads are built, after individualists have had an education, after medical research has cured uh, diseases, right? Their diseases, right? If you, are, if you, you know, uh, have to pay an arm and a leg for your insulin and you're a diabetic, you are not free, okay? But thanks to Democrats, that's going to be capped at $35, okay? So any thoughts about this? I think that's good. So now um, this is a little a little more about government. Okay, so Antonia Catton Wright. Okay, the market often fails people, and we, through government, need to meet each other's needs. We need robust programs of social insurance and public investment. Okay, robust programs, and we talk about that. We use those. We use that adjective. Okay, so. We talk about protecting these programs and expanding them to cover more of our needs. Like for instance, Antonia writes, with the care infrastructure, our care infrastructure, healthcare, childcare, elder care, okay? Let's, let's expand the programs. Let's talk about these things, okay? Protecting the safety net is the bare minimum we should be doing and talking about, okay? Uh, we're not uh, we're so busy sometimes discussing how government will clean up the messes created by the private sector. You know, we focus on, you know, how much we should spend and who should pay for it. And uh, we're not talking about the, the other battle, making the private sector behave better, okay? So the economic part of the social contract is seriously broken and people want somebody to do something about it, okay? So, by the way, so any, any thoughts about this? I want to. I want to get to empathy. Um, just uh, yeah, go ahead. Wrap it up pretty soon, Federico. Would you wrap it up? Okay, so I'll make it quick. So let me let me just go to empathy. So someone asked Lake of, you know, how do you get? How do I get this relative? You know, over Thanksgiving, um, who you know, how how do I get you know that relative to to have empathy? You know, to to and so. Um, so he gave this answer, it's really brilliant, okay? So it, don't, don't argue with your fox watching Uncle Bob over Thanksgiving. Instead, ask him to tell you a story about a time he did something good for someone else, okay? Now listen, and then ask him to tell you another one, okay? Tell me more about that, okay? Tell me more about that. Uh, tell me another one, okay? Also, um, how about... You know, how about when you did some something for someone who was in a friend or family? Okay, I'm I'm curious. How did it feel? How did it feel? Okay, tell me. Expand 
the moral universe of them, okay? So anyway, so we need to activate empathy and we need to work toward building a more empathetic society in general, okay? Empathy is the driving force of everything we Democrats do. And here's a nice definition from Antonia of patriotism. Patriotism means caring about what happens to all Americans, okay? So anyway, this, uh, I'll, I'll wrap up basically with this, um, this resource, which is something, some tips, great tips from, um, from David Fenton. David Fenton created it was now a powerful uh, PR firm uh, that helps progressive causes, focus on progressive causes, okay? David Fenton, there's a, you know, they're, they have a presence, I think, in, you know, in DC, in Washington, in New York, and West Coast, anyway. But so David Fenton wrote this, this activist media handbook, okay? And so here's some of the, uh, the tips in that handbook that we, we should keep in mind, okay? Craft simple messages everyone can understand, okay? If you're aiming schools, say, at a, at a school, aim your message to the school janitor, not the master's degree or PhD, you know, school the, uh, principal, okay? Aim it at the janitor, okay? Speak to the heart first, the mind second. Heart first. Stories need good and bad characters, okay? Repeat, repeat, repeat your messages, okay? Practice framing issues your way, according to your democratic values, okay? And then lastly, communication rules, okay? So use symbolism, use metaphors, use visuals, make it visual, tell the truth, ensure that you're reaching people by using advertising, okay? Um, recruit celebrities, influencers, uh, cultural figures, okay? Fight, fight falsehood and disinformation immediately. You know, it's, you know, it's who you know. But uh, so essentially, just, just do some of, the, some of the things that I'm talking about. We, we have to evolve. We have to move. Um, we have to evolve in the way we communicate, folks. Thank you so much. How much time we have? I guess we out of time, Greg? Well, I mean, uh, you know, we've got 29 people still here or 27. And, but I'm just going to, I'm just going to say a few, a few things here, but um, so what I mentioned three principles, uh, three guiding principles to much of what I talk about, what from the field of psychology, linguistics, and neuroscience. Okay. I just want to point out that these three fields are part of a, uh, an umbrella field called cognitive science. Okay. Yeah, and, and so it's, uh, um, and, um, uh, I talk about branding, right. And guy and target. Um, and so, um. So anyway, these things, good things to, to keep in mind. In terms of branding, okay, we've learned from the former president that all press is good press, even negative, right? I mean, we thought, you know, after the, uh, you know, after he was talking, remember the, uh, you know, about fondling women and this and that, we thought, oh, okay, he's done, right? And, and, then, and then he's stronger, right? I mean, all press is good press, okay? So uh, on all branding, it's good branding, okay? So, so we need to talk about our uh, moral values. We need to reach for the high moral brand, uh, high moral ground, okay? Repeating toxic words, dwelling in toxic frames, brands the GOP, okay? Keeps us from branding ourselves, defining who we are and what we stand for in terms of moral values, okay? Um, so branding is crucial. Have you ever noticed how Republicans saw better than us with street signs, okay? Um, you know, they, 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 they're brand, they, they, they get branded. Okay. We need to understand branding as well. Um, here's Stephen Colbert. Okay. He doesn't name the former president by name. That's, that's, that's for, that's on purpose. Okay. So he, he asked his audience to give him, give him names, uh, ways to name the former president. Okay. So there's, there's one, for instance, one possibility that he used. Colonel, colonel slanders, okay, uh, or, or he who shall be named, okay, so just be creative, uh, just don't use his last name, because it's linguistically powerful, actually, it's linguistically powerful, so branding matters, using adjectives matters, okay, so repeat, 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 okay, it's this, uh, repetition is our friend, okay, um, and you know, we know this from 
um, actually uh, Frank Lance was uh, George Bush's uh, framing guru. Okay, he's he talks about repetition too. Okay, when when you're sick, sick in the stomach, repeating the same thing over and over and over again is when your audience has your intended audience has heard it for the first time. Okay, so um, repetition is is crucial. So um, uh, I have so much, and we need to borrow. We need to we need to think in terms of borrowing. Okay. Um, look at look at what Anat Shankar Osorio and We Make the Future uh, put out, okay? Please use this guidance. Please use all this messaging that we're putting out, okay? If words don't spread, they don't work. That's what Anat Shankar Osorio keeps talking about, okay? Borrow language from good sources like Anat Shankar Osorio, ASO Communication, We Make the Future, uh, Antonia Scatton, okay? When you hear good language, use it. Okay, just borrow and repeat. Okay, so I think that's probably a good way to a good point to uh, wrap up. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for your attention. Let's keep doing this. You know, um, you know, I wish I could do another workshop on, uh, um, you know, dirty tricks that the other side uses. You know, um, cogn cognitive fallacies, um, something that uh, I've been thinking about too. I mean, we need to be prepared for debate, frankly, with the other side um, and all kinds of dirty tricks. So, yeah. Greg, do you want to say something to us? Oh, thank you very much, Federico, and for everyone uh, for participating. And uh, if this was your first uh, workshop or your third or whatever, um, thank you very much. And I'll be sending out an email with some of these uh, references that, uh, that Federico mentioned, David Fenton, uh, uh, the New Republic, and um, I think that you two... Antonia Scatton, Antonia Scatton, uh, Substack. Oh, yeah, well, definitely that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, so I'll be trying to work uh, work on the uploading the recording which, uh, to YouTube, our Fairfax County, County Democratic Committee website and YouTube channel um, sometime over the weekend. So and if I should, yeah, just Greg, just one last thing. I put my email in the chat. I am looking for opportunities to do more workshops. If you can think, if your organization is interested in hearing from me, please reach out. Send it, you know, send an email to F-E-D-E, F-E-D-E, Fede, at moralforceforgood.com. Okay, just reach out. Uh, I'm looking for opportunities. So. Thank you so much for listening, right? Good night, everyone. Rika, can we also contact you with questions? Yes, yes, please. Let me, okay, let me put, thank you. I, I'll put it in the chat one more time, okay? Thank, thank you so much. Ferry at, Ferry at moralforceforgood.com. All right, folks? Um,